So hello and welcome to the online learning uh, live talk about getting started with online learning. So my name is Sarah Kearns and I'm an online marketing officer at IT Slag and I'll be your host for this webinar. Um, so today I am joined by Stephanie Gregg, our online student advisor of quality and manufacturing programs at IT Slago. So welcome, Stephanie. Hi, Sarah. Thank you. I'm also joined by Gavin Lynch, Head of Online Learning uh, Experience at IT Sligo. So welcome, Gavin. And also joined by Jennifer Gilligan, one of our instructional designers in our Centre for Online Learning with expertise in our online learning platform, Moodle. You're very welcome, Jennifer. Thank you, Sarah. Hi, everyone. Hello. Okay, so today we're going to be chatting about how students will get started with online learning at IT Sligo and what are the key areas that students need to be familiar with before they commence their studies. Um, so before we get started, I'll just go through some housekeeping. I see we've quite a few attendees in there. We've over 400 attendees. <laughs> so, um, so this session will be recorded, but attendees will not be visible. Our talk will last for 25 minutes with a five minute Q&A at the end. Uh, if you'd like to ask a question, please submit it using the Q&A feature um, on Zoom and we'll answer it in the Q&A section of this webinar. Please do not see any personal or do not share any personal information during the live talk. And if you'd like to ask us any questions after the webinar has ended, please visit our live Q&A on our virtual open day webpage at itsligo.ie forward slash August open evening or email admissions at itsligo.ie. So brilliant. So we're just going to be chatting through today uh, what students need to be familiar with before they commence their studies. Um, so we'll start off with you, Stephanie. So every year we've over 4,800 students online learning at IT Sligo. Could you tell us a little bit about what happens when a student has been accepted onto an online course? Sure. So once an applicant has been offered a place on their course, they will receive an email from admissions asking them to secure their place by paying a deposit of €250. Euro. This email will also include a link uh, to where they can pay the deposit online. And if your company is paying your fees, you don't have to pay a deposit, but you'll be asked to complete an invoice request form so that we can invoice your company for your fees down the line. Then around mid-August, the next step is registration. So that will be about this week or next week for applicants this year. Uh, you will receive a registration email from our admissions team, which will give you details on how to register online as an IT Sligo student, how you access Moodle, which is our virtual learning environment, how to access your student email account, how to get your student ID card, and it will also have information on induction and orientation week and when your classes commence. This email will also include your user ID, your PIN, and all the URL links to these items. So everything you need will be in this email. Um, to help and to support the applicants with this registration process, we've also created a very useful step-by-step uh, -step video uh, to support you on how to complete your registration online. And this, a link to this video can be found uh, on our web uh, site by visiting itsligo.ie forward slash online learning. And just to remember, all these emails from admissions will be sent to the email address uh, the applicant used when applying for their course. So please do keep an eye out in your emails and um, keep an eye out for it and keep it safe. Perfect. Thank you, Stephanie. So when can applicants expect their registration email? Do we know when it will be sent out? So this year, uh, I was just talking to the admissions team today, and it's likely that by the end of this week, it should be hitting their inboxes, if not first thing on Monday morning. Brilliant, brilliant. And that email will include all the information that applicants need to start the registration process. Yeah, everything's in it. And if you have any questions after you get it, you can contact admissions at itsligo.ie and we'll help you out. Brilliant, brilliant. Okay, so when a student is fully registered at IT Sligo, what resources do they have access to? Um, so firstly, when a student has completed their registration, they'll be invited to attend and participate in the Induction and Orientation Week. And this is a really good starting point for any online student at IT Sligo to get to know what resources and supports and services are available to them. And I know my colleagues this evening here are going to talk a bit more about induction later on. So um, I'll just move on. Um, we also have a dedicated team of online student advisors that support online students throughout their learning journey. Our online student advisors will reach out to students prior to registration to introduce them themselves and then they're not a source of ongoing support to you throughout your academic year. So if you have any questions or queries or any support you need, your online student advisor can be your first point of contact. With regards to supports and resources available to online students, um, they will have full access to Moodle, 
they'll be given an IT Sligo student email account. They will have full access to the IT Sligo Yates Library and all its services. For any students with a special learning needs or a disability, they can avail of the learning support services through the Access Office. And when it comes to academic supports, we have an academic writing centre, a math support centre, an engineering support centre and a technology and English language support centre. So all of which gives students access to tutorial supports from an academic support tutor. And then when it comes to student support services, students have access to the careers office, counselling service, health service, pastoral care and uh, support from our admissions team. And it's also just important to say that online students have the same access to support services and resources as full-time on-campus students do. And again, to make it a little bit easier for online students, we've created a very useful guide this year that details all the supports available to online students. And this can be downloaded from our website by going to itsligo.ie forward slash online learning. Brilliant. Thank you, Stephanie. There's loads of great resources that online students uh, can avail of. I think it's a really important point too, just to say that online students have the same uh, supports and services as full time on campus students. That's really important. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Brilliant. So, Gavin, following on from all the great resources uh, that an online learners have access to when they're registered students, can you bring us through how important induction is as a new online learner at IT Sligo and what students can expect at induction 2021? Thanks, Sarah. Um, I, you know, I think that our experience over the last 20 years has shown us that those students who attend induction really gain from it. They gain the opportunity to meet their coordinators, meet their lecturers, meet fellow students and to I suppose to gain an understanding of the resources and the supports that we have in place. Uh, it, it, you know, if you don't go through the induction process, then you miss out on, on a lot of that. And that's, it's really about preparing yourself for, for that world of study. Many people are returning to study after a long period of absence from study and they've been in the workplace. Um, and I think we all know when it's like preparing for a job, you've got to hit the ground running. I think that's why it's so important to, to participate in the induction process. Now, many students will be familiar with some of the technologies that, that we have. That's fine. They might be familiar and they might feel that they're ready for, for, uh, for study. But it is, as I say, the, uh, the feedback that we have from, from past students is that it's very important to them. Um, and in, in previous years, up until really last year, we had a, a, a kind of a one day on site induction event and it was it was full on it was very intense um probably too much information bit of information overload so now what we have is an induction week which will be from the 13th to the 17th of september um, it's online a lot of the students are coming in uh into the into the college so they can kind of dip in and out of the the activities and the supports that we have and they can access different different things so a combination of live events particularly in the evening of Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday, each, um, each program board, so each student will, will be able to attend a session from their program coordinator and their lecturers, a live event for one hour between seven and eight, and that will be broken down by faculty. So one evening will be for uh, business and social sciences, one evening for engineering and design, and another evening for, for the School of Science, Faculty of Science. Uh, and then there are a number of pre-recorded uh, material that students can engage with and, and listen to presentations from our, our president, Dr. Brendan McCormack, from our registrar, Dr. Michelle Glacken, uh, from our VP for online development, um, Professor Jacqueline McCormack, uh, and then other resources that we have around preparing uh, for student success. Um, we have a number of, of short courses, fully online courses that students can engage with around student success, academic integrity, uh, being well, living well. Um, I'm sure other colleagues will touch upon those as we go through, uh, through, through this evening session. And then each lunchtime during that week, we'll have a little live public event. So anybody can, I can see there's questions coming in uh, through this session now, but there'll be a live session with uh, online student advisors, different, different supports people that can um, address questions in that one hour lunchtime session. Um, so there's a, there are a lot of resources, there are a lot of supports, and what I'm really saying is make the most of that induction week. Um, it's not a full-on week in terms of a, you know, five or six hours, it's maybe an hour a day, half an hour a day that you can, you can touch base. Um, we'll have a full 
schedule for that week that you that, that students can engage with uh, different things at different times. Okay, brilliant. Thank you, Gavin. And just to confirm, the dates for online learning induction this year is the 13th to the 17th of September. That's right, yeah. Brilliant. One other thing I, I should mention, Sarah, is uh, we have a mandatory COVID course, which will be in place. I'm not sure when that will go live, but probably on Thursday of that week. So Thursday, the 16th of September, um, either at one o'clock, two o'clock in the afternoon, this um, uh, it will go live, which means that the students won't be able to access Moodle. Now Jennifer's going to talk about Moodle in, in a moment, our, our virtual learning environment. They will have to complete this course. Now, for some online students, they will say, well, why, why am I doing a COVID course? Because uh, I'm coming to campus. But for many online students, they will. They'll have to come in for a workshop or come in to take an exam or assessment or whatever. So it is there. It's applied to all students. It's a very short uh, course, but it will have to be taken. So just to flag that one as well. Okay, perfect. It's good to get the heads up on that. Um, so Jennifer, many students might not be aware what Moodle is. Can you give us an overview of Moodle and what students can expect when they log into Moodle for the first time? Sure, Sarah. Yeah, Moodle is our virtual learning environment. So all lecturers and registered students can access Moodle. And once a student logs in, they'll see a list of their module pages and also an overall program page. Now, as Gavin mentioned, they'll also see the COVID-19 course once it's released, along with other supports, which are very useful uh, during the induction week, and we'll be pointing to those resources. Um, each module page enables lecturers of that module to provide learning materials to their students. So for example, any PDFs, videos, recordings, web links, even the times for your live lectures and the links to your live classes are all contained on those module pages in Moodle. So your program page then will display overall information about your program, such as your timetable and other important announcements. Moodle enables communication between your lecturer and yourself, and some lecturers will use forums for this, and a forum is a messaging area within each of your Moodle pages, uh, Moodle module pages, sorry. So it's a space where you can ask questions of your fellow students and also of your lecturer. Um, just be mindful that forums are also uh, post, uh, messages are also posted out to all participants on that page. So you may find that you want to communicate with your lecturer, maybe one-to-one -one, uh, through email, but discuss that with your lecturer. Um, Moodle provides assessment tools, so you'll find on your pages uh, quizzes and assignments that your lecturer provides to you during your term, and students use Moodle pages to download their assignment briefs from the lecturers and upload their responses into Moodle for their lecturer to grade. So the first time that you log into Moodle, you should access our online student support page. So this is a really good place to start uh, gathering information um, about Moodle itself, about navigating around Moodle, accessing your emails, using links, and it's also a practice area. So we've uploaded some quizzes in there and assignments that are all used as practice. So you can um, use our sample assignment, download it, and then upload some response just to practice. So it's a good place to start during induction week. Brilliant, thank you, Jennifer. Um, and so during induction, there will be dedicated training for Moodle. So students, yeah, if they can get familiar with Moodle during induction. Yeah, that's right. So we have videos in there on that page um, to just give you an overview of how to navigate around Moodle and also accessing all of the great supports that we have in there. So Moodle is our go-to place for everything and everything is branched out from there. Brilliant. Thank you, Jennifer. So then what about live lectures? How do students find out about them? Um, are the like how are they able to join in? Are they able to watch back if they haven't been able to attend an actual lecture? So how does that work? So a link to your live lecture will be available within each of your Moodle module pages. So once, once you click on the link, you'll be brought straight into your live classroom space. Some lecturers use Microsoft Teams and others use a software called Adobe Connect. 
So your lecturer will present material to you during this live class and discuss relevant topics. And it's also your opportunity to ask questions and get to know your fellow peers. So each of these live classes are recorded so that you can access them even if you miss the class. But they're also really useful as a revision tool. So they're available to you all through your semester. Um, and particularly at the end of a semester, it's useful to go back over the recordings as revision. Um, they are available to you for the full duration, as I mentioned. And also we've put in some practice recordings into that online support page that I mentioned so that you can click on them and have a look at what a typical recorded lecture looks like, how you speed it up, slow it down, um, and just generally get used to um, the functionality of recorded lectures. Okay, brilliant. I just have a question there. The recorded lectures, can they be accessed anytime? So yes, they can. And that's brilliant that they're, you can access them right up until the end of the semester too, so you can go back and study and help with your revision as well. Yeah, as I mentioned, um, you know, if there's a particular point in a video, that there's something you don't understand. And even if you've attended the lecture, it's useful to go back over maybe the key topics that were covered. Um, or maybe if you wish to ask a question after the live class, um, you know, you can also go in, look at the recording, pinpoint the point at which something was mentioned and then ask the lecturer and you being very specific then about your question. And as I mentioned before, we use forums, which are really useful for peer to peer learning. So not only are you asking the lecturer, but you're opening up the discussion with your peers. So equally, if you see a question in there in that discussion forum that you can answer, um, it's really nice that you can help a fellow uh, peer and, you know, you can learn from each other. So you're not just relying on the lecturer. Um, you're also sharing uh, examples of maybe even uh, work that you have worked on, maybe your own work experience or examples um, which help others to understand the topic. Brilliant. Thank you, Stephanie. So we'll move into our Q&A section of this live talk. So one question that came in. So hi there. Can you tell me if online classes will be pre-recorded or live and during live lectures? Is it possible to get a live response from a lecture? Jennifer, do you have any information there? Yes. So live lectures are interactive. So uh, you do need a headset. You need to be able to hear the lecture. Um, and in our online supports page, we've provided some uh, diagnostic tests for your audio equipment to make sure that you can test them out prior to any lecture. So it's a good idea to go into that page, check your audio and make sure you can hear because when you go into the lecture, you will have the facility to raise your hand and to ask questions. Uh, your, your mic may be muted. Um, because the lecturer may choose to do so, but they will give you an opportunity during the class or after the class to ask questions. And um, there may be a lot of interactive um, interactivity within a live class, depending on what the topic is. You may be asked to do some group work within the live class, go into a breakout room. Um, the lecturer may conduct a poll um, and ask questions and get feedback, check your understanding. So yeah, it's, it's not a passive exercise. So attending the live class is recommended so that you can participate in those types of activities. But obviously if it's recorded, it's uh, beneficial to the flexibility of online learning where you may have other commitments in the evening on particular days and you can uh, still take the opportunity to watch back. Okay, brilliant. Thank you, Jennifer. Um, so just another question that came in there. Can course fees be paid in installments and how regular will payments have to be made? Stephanie, can you tell us that? Sure, so absolutely. Students have the option to pay their fees via installments and can split their fees over two installments in that academic year. So once they pay their deposit, they'll receive a deposit confirmation email from our admissions team. And in that email, it includes information on how you can pay your fees via installments. So it'll all be in that email for you. And absolutely, installments is certainly an option for them. Brilliant. Thank you, Stephanie. So just a question that came in there. So when do students receive their timetables? I presume that's induction. Is it Gavin or Jennifer? Can you let us know? 
the timetables will be issued, I would say, in that week of in induction. And certainly I mentioned the, the sessions in the evenings on Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday when you meet your programme team. So some of the questions that are coming into the Q&A at the moment are very important questions to ask the programme team because they have the more, more detail on it. Um, but typically lectures, live lectures are in the evenings uh, between seven and, and nine o'clock. Um, but sometimes they sit outside of that, but they're not really in, in, in the daytime. But those timetables will be um, agreed and issued in that week of induction. Brilliant. Um, and then another question. So how do I contact lecturers for questions during the semester? Who do you go through? Who would like to answer? Jennifer, would you want to jump in there? Yeah, sure. So as I mentioned, um, your lecture will provide you information in terms of the preferred communication, but all Moodle pages will have a forum for you to ask a question in. Um, and as I mentioned, that forum post will go out to everybody that is um, registered onto that module. So you may also wish, you know, if, it, if it's different circumstances, you may wish to send them an email to ask them something. Um, or you can ask them in the live class. So there is a chat box facility as well. It would be either if you're in Teams or if you're in Adobe Connect to ask a question. And um, so there's multiple ways of communicating with your lecture. Um, but we would direct you to Moodle first. And generally that the types of communication is posted at the top of your Moodle page, you know, the email address of the lecturer, um, and of course the forum. So there's there's several ways to do so. And it's it's really depends on the type of question you're asking as well, whether you want to ask the lecturer privately or whether you're comfortable with the forum post. Okay. Um, brilliant. Thank you, Jennifer. And then another question. Can you tell me the start dates for course commencement? Gavin, would you have information there? Yes, lectures will begin in the week after uh, induction. So that's uh, Monday, the, is it the 20th, 20th of uh, 20th, September. Yeah. The lectures will, will commence in that, in that week. Again, your program coordinators will confirm that in that, in that week of induction in those evening, evening sessions. Not everybody's gonna have a lecture on a Monday. You might have um, a lecture on Monday, or sometimes two in an evening, um, probably a couple of evenings a week. Again, it depends on the, on the, on the program uh, and the structure of that program. Okay, great. There's quite a few questions coming in there. So when do your lecture start? So that's the 20th of September. How do you know who your program coordinator is or your course coordinator is? So that will be given to you during induction week. Yeah, I'm right in saying that, Gavin. Yes, that's right. Um, like we should have information up on our, on our website prior to that, but you will certainly meet the program coordinator and the lecturers uh, of, on your course in that in that evening session, so it's very important to attend those, and there will be links uh, to those events posted once we've got our induction page up. Mm -hmm. um, I'm seeing a lot of questions about exams. I might mm. um, pick up on that one, Sarah, if that's okay. And, and time yeah. zones. A, a few people have asked about time zones um, and attending. You know, is it mandatory to attend lectures? It's not mandatory. I used to have students who were in Australia, Canada, different parts of the world, so they couldn't join a live lecture, uh, but they watched the recordings and they basically developed their own timetable in terms of when they engage with those lectures and when they engage with the uh, assignments. So it's important to, to do that, to have your own study plan, uh, particularly if you're in a different time zone. So it's obviously an advantage to attend a live lecture because you can have a Q and A and listen to other students asking questions and have a conversation. Um, but we do appreciate that people are in different time zones or perhaps they're working in the evening or their family commitments in the evening. So, you know, online, our online programs are as, as flexible and as accessible as we can make them. I think that's, that's a really important point to, to, to note. Um, people are asking about exams being online. Some of our exams are, are online where a program board have decided that they can make the assessment in an online environment. They are invigilated online through a webcam, but a lot of the exams are still held in venues in Sligo, Dublin and Cork. And that's in a typical exam hall where people sit down with, a, with pen and paper. 
Brilliant. Thank you, Gavin. And just to mention uh, for those asking about examinations in our online uh, live talk at 8 p.m., we'll be going through assessments and examinations there. So tune in. So brilliant. I think we'll wrap it up there. So thanks, Gavin, Stephanie and Jennifer uh, for being our panellists this evening. There was a lot of really good information shared on how to get started with online learning IT Sligo. So if you'd like to watch back, we'll upload a video of this live talk to our virtual open evening webpage at itslygo.ie forward slash August open evening. Um, and just to mention, if we didn't get to answer your question, you can head over to our live Q&A on our virtual open evening webpage and submit any questions there. Our team will be available to answer your questions until 9 p.m. this evening. Um, and we also have a registration and fees help desk uh, live until 9 p.m. as well on our virtual open evening webpage for any questions about registration fees and um, payments and that kind of stuff. So thanks, guys. And thanks, thank you. To thank you, Sarah. Sarah. Yeah. Thanks, everyone.